Good morning and welcome to Boy Taul in Spain. We're here in the Pyrenees for the third year in a row and we're absolutely delighted to welcome you to this beautiful, beautiful day in Boy Taul. It's the Burt Modif ISMF World Cup 2024. As you can see, a beautiful sunny day. It has been quite icy on the slopes, but now that the sun is hitting it, it looks like it's going to be a brilliant, fast and furious day here for the sprint race. Qualifications have taken place and uh, we are looking at a different course uh, here at Waitaul. Of course, two years ago we had the European Championships, last year the World Championships and today and tomorrow a World Cup. As you can see, this is the course, uh, the diamonds up there and then a sharp turn to the right followed by the boot pack. Look at those beautiful steps, 35 of them. A quick change again, and then an almost flat skin. You can see uh, the course being just perfected there. And into the last transition for the downhill. And away they go. They will have 16 gates to get through. Look at this beautiful footage here of the sprint course here in the Pyrenees in Boitaul. Second week in a row in the Pyrenees. We were in Andorra the last weekend, of course, for an individual and a vertical, and over into Spain, into Boitaul for today, a sprint, and tomorrow, a relay. Look at that. Isn't it just beautiful? And away they will go into the last bit. Kylie Oler there on the start line. And behind her, jogging up and down, is uh, Alba de Silvestro. Number eight, that is Alessandra Schmidt, Marta Garcia Fares, who had the fastest time of the qualifying today. Uh, Celia Peria Pizzi of France. Ivona Janosic of Poland. And Halle Heifman of the United States. The Americans have changed their uniforms this year. Uh, no longer solely Captain America looking, although they've kept the star in the middle, but they are in black. Here we are with the first heat for the women, uh, which will be kicking off in just about a minute and a half. We can hear and see Christine Cavanier, the course commentator, talking us through, but that is the first six women ready to rock and roll in the start line, first heat here in Boitaul. As I say, Marta Garcia Faris had the fastest time in qualifying at 3.39.64. So it will be, be interesting to see how she gets on. She was sixth in the sprint in Val Terrance, eighth in the big pardon, uh, yes, eighth in the European Championships back in Flen. That was the last sprint we had. Of course, European Championships counts completely separately in terms of in terms of uh, results. So this is, in fact, the second sprint race of the World Cup season. Okay. 
getting ready now for the first heat in the women's competition. And they're off. And it is the first heat as we see Ivona Janosik there. In fact, they're all fairly neck and neck as they head up there, but Ivona Janosik on the second from the right in the white helmet, taking slightly, uh, no, not just falling in behind, slightly behind Marta Garcia Fares now. As it is Marta Garcia Fares of Spain and Ivona Janosik of Poland who take the lead here. In behind them, we have just coming up through the middle, Celia Perea Pesce. Into the first set of diamonds, they go. And it is really neck and neck for Ivona Janosik and Marta Garcia Fares. Followed by Halle Heifman of the United States. And they're starting to spread out a little bit, but actually it is Celia Pereira Pesce of France in third place as Ivona Janosik takes the slight lead. Beautiful, beautiful images here, so clear from Boitaul. This is going to be a really interesting part of the course, not something that we see very often, a sharp kick to the right uh, as they come out and head into the first or the only foot part of the course. Ivona Janosik, two and a half seconds ahead of Marta Garcia Fares and she takes off really nicely there. Great transitions here as we have Ivona Janosik ahead of Marta Garcia Fares and Celia Pera Pesce. Looks like Halle Heifman taking a bit of a slower transition there. As Marti Marta Garcia powers up here to catch up. In fact, all these three are going to come in fairly quickly. It's all, as always, going to come down to, as not always, but as often as the case, come down to who is fastest in transition. This is where, oh, it's silly. What a phenomenal transition from her. Spectacularly quick as she takes off ahead of Marta Garcia Fares for this sort of 20 meters, um, of beginning right at the end and very quick again. This is really putting their technical skills to the test here as it skins off and time to ski in to the vest. Let's not forget those skins have to be tucked in super, super tight. And Celia Pia Pese takes a bit of a fall. And so it's going to be down to who can get past her because she still manages to come out quickly. Even though Marta Garcia was first into that, the, into that transition, it is Celia Pia Pese ahead of Marta Garcia Fares. And it is, of course, the first two in the heats that will definitely get through to the semi-final. And for lucky loser, as they come across the line, it is Celia Peria Pese, Marta Garcia Fares, and Ivona Janosik. What a great race there for all those three women. Just left the rest of the field for dust. We can't even see them in the background. So it'll be through to the semi-finals for Marta Garcia Fares and Celia Peria Pese. And we will just have to, or Ivona Janosik will have to hope that she has won the fastest third times. Alexander Schmidt of Switzerland coming through in fourth. Lining up here now are, is heat number two. On the left there, Luna Dupont of France. Lisa Moreschini of Italy, Emily Harrop. I would say probably the favorite for this. This heat. Sarah Dreyer, European vertical champion. Then we have the two Americans, Rudy Gwen, 
uh, Perry, I beg your pardon, Gwen Rudy and Grace Stayberg. And they're off. This is the second heat. I think the clear favourite here will have to be Emily Harrop. Of course, she had an absolute shocker in Val Terrence, where she had to she had a do not finish uh, because she lost her skins twice and eventually just said enough is enough. But here she goes, powering up the hill. She missed the European Championships, so this is her first uh, sprint that she will be hoping to finish the entire competition of the season. Back with a vengeance, uh, European champion for individual and vertical right there. And such uh, a multi-talented athlete right there from France, Emily Harrop. Tucked in behind her, her compatriot, Luna Dupont. And you can see it's still quite icy as they head up this hill, cold, cold, uh, with icy conditions, and quite steep this course here in Boitao. 70 meters of vertical in total, and starting at over 2,000 meters, 2,047 meters, so it's quite high. It's not the highest, of course. Uh, Val Torrance is at 2,300, but still um, quite high up in the mountains as Emily Harrop comes into transition. Followed by Luna Dupont and Ilaria Veronese of, I beg your pardon, this is not, this is Lisa Moroschini. Ilaria Veronese very sadly at home, having injured her knee in Andorra last week. Get well soon, Ilaria. Gap opening up there between Emily Harrop and Luna Dupont as they head into the final skip on the transition. If this is not something you are used to or you are very familiar with, the speed and skill with which these athletes are able to transition from one part of the discipline to the other, to the other to the next is just extraordinary. Emily Harrop into transition there across that split time in first with a four second lead ahead now of Lisa Moroschini, but just behind her, Luna Dupont. So it'll be uh, Interesting to see who gets out of here quickly. More, uh, the quickest, Lisa Moroschini, makes it out there. As they head down here, and Emily Harrop, a nice lead there over Lisa Moroschini. In they come, a comfortable, comfortable win there for Emily Harrop of France, ahead of Lisa Moroschini. And Luna Dupont, a great result here for the young athletes from France. Sarah Dreyer, in, well, we haven't seen Sarah Dreyer finish yet. It is just non-stop here in Boitoul, but it's always the same. Uh, as you know, for the, the sprint, that is Alexandra Zvezden, Zvezdin of Canada, Yuri Tanaka of Japan, Maria Costa Diaz of Spain, Tatiana Paller in the very distinctive German uniform. Julia Murada of Italy and her compatriot Alba de Silvestro, who was the vertical winner in Andorra last year, uh, last year, last week, 
Uh, she had a fantastic result there, her first World Cup vertical win. And as she told us on the day, the same place that she had her first individual win. So a very special place for her in Andorra. So back to the Pyrenees. And away they go. The third heat for the women here in Boitol at the Bert Woody ISMF World Cup 2024. World at heat number three, as it says in the bottom of your screen, and Julia Murada, Tatiana Paller, and Maria Costa Diaz take a clear lead there. Coming through that first set of diamonds. Maria Costa Diaz was 10th in the European Championships in Flen earlier this year. Julia Morada missed the European Championships, certainly in the sprint. As the three of them, the two of them, I beg your pardon, plus Tatiana Paller, Germany. And it's Julia Murada and Tatiana Paller. Tatiana Paller, sixth in the European Championships, eighth in Val Terrence back in November. As Julia Murada takes off nice and easily ahead of Tatiana Paller. And they head into the foot part now. And a good gap now opening up between Murada and Paller and behind them in third, Maria Costa Diaz. Tatiana Paller not letting Julia Murada out of her sights. Here it's gonna come down. Now, quite often said how important you see Julia Murada has gone to the front of the transition box there, but a very quick transition there for Tatiana Paller. Now, they won't necessarily be worrying too much about racing each other, although it is, I suppose, part of the game, but what they will be, uh, they'll know is that it, they just have to be the first of the first of two, beg your pardon, one and two <laughs> in this heat and they will go into the semi-final as Maria Costa Diaz and Alba de Silvestro come in to transition almost neck and neck and they will be battling now for a uh, fastest third and fourth place, well it could be fourth, uh, two lucky losers will go through from all of the six heats, uh, five heats and they will then go on to make up the rest of the semi-finals. Now, one thing you can say is that if you're in a skiing Alessandro, then you are probably not going to come out on top. It is, uh, she is an excellent downhill skier and there uh, you can see her, in fact, coming in in third, having overtaken Maria Costa Diet, Murada, head of Tatiana Paller and Abra Di Silvestro, I believe. Here we are. Heat number four, non-stop, non-stop. That was Mariana Yegachikova. There is the European champion. In fact, that was former European champion and current European champion. And we had Mariana Yegachikova, Marianne Paton. That is Johanna Hemer of Austria. This is Giulia Compagnoni of Italy. Apologies for the graphics. And this is Sofia Wessling of Germany. And in there, we should have seen somewhere, 
Ah, there she is, right on the far end. Natsumi Uzi, Uzui of Japan. Take your box. Meet number four, and away they go. I would say that this is going to be a battle between Marianne Faton and Mariana Yegachikova, the former and current European champions. Mariana Yegachikova is the current world champion, and Marianne Faton is the former world champion. So between them, they are holding or have held both those titles. And as they make their way into the top of this ahead of this race it is quite clear that that is uh, exactly as predicted mariana yegachikova in the slovakian uniform goes left as we are looking at the screen marianne faton of spain of switzerland goes right through the diamonds just a half a ski behind mariana yegachikova wearing the red number Actually, she should probably be in number two, but Caroline Ulrich, who won in Valtorance, her first sprint win in the senior category, is not here this weekend. So the red number goes to Marianne Platon, who was second behind her in Valtorance. Big pardon, third in Valtorance. As Marianne Gichikova takes the lead now over Marianne Platon, Coming up fast on the left there, on the left of our screens, Johanna Hemer of Austria. Mayan Faton putting a little bit of a sprint on there. And tucked in behind them, I suspect, is Giulia Compagnoni. Yes, it is. Fast, fast transition there from Mariana Yegichikova. And Mayan Faton showing why she is the current European champion with that also very fast transition as Giulia Compagnoni overtakes Johanna Hemer to go into third as they come up into this foot part. Marianne Faton giving Mariana Yegachikova cause to just look over her shoulder. As Giulia Compagnoni goes into third and we will see that as we, we see the last Last onto Skin's transition. Nice, very smooth from Mariana Yegichikova. Marianne Faton fo follows her. Giulia Compagnoni of Italy out behind her in third. And they're away into the skiing. Mariana Yegichikova looking very calm, cool, calm and collected as she and Marianne Faton head down to take, all being well, the first two spots in this penultimate heat. In behind them, Giulia Compagnoni. They come over the line, almost neck and neck, just a number one there for Mariana Gichikova, Marianne Faton behind her, and Giulia Compagnoni coming in behind her. In terms of lucky losers, I can tell you that so far, uh, Ivona Janicic in the first heat is the fastest of the third place, but it could be third and fourth from the same heat, uh, but I don't think it's going to be. The next fastest third place so far is Alba de Silvestro with 3.41. I haven't got the exact timings for this one, or have I? 3.34, Giulia Copanoni takes the fastest, uh, the second fastest lucky loser, uh, the second fastest third place spot. Let's see, this is the last of the women's heats. On the left there, Ana Alonso. Here she is, Ana Alonso of Spain. 
having a fantastic season. Next to her, Laura de Planche. It is, in fact, La Ana Alonso in the middle. That is Maria Ordonez Cabacho. Katia Mascarona next to her. Then in the middle, we have Ana Alonso Rodriguez. Thibaut Dessin of Switzerland in the white helmet there in the red suit. Laura de Planche of France. And just at the uh, back there, Montserrat Alou of Chile. As they head up here, Ana Alonso Rodriguez will be the one to beat here. As I say, what a phenomenal season she's having. Second in the Sprint World Championship, silver medalist in Flen last month, I beg, I beg your pardon, beginning of this month. Gosh, it's all going past so quickly. As they head up through the diamonds, it is Ana Alonso Rodriguez and Katia Mascherona of Italy. Katia Mascherona will be hoping to have a great result today. She uh, was 20th in Valterrance, so we'll be hoping to really make a big difference here today. 11th in the Sprint European Championships. And as they head this rather unusual right kick turn, it's not quite a kick turn as it is described in ski mountaineering, but it's certainly a, a good steep and sharp right turn there as Anna Alonso comes in ahead of Katia Mascarona and Laura de Planche, Thib Dessin of Switzerland and Maria Ordonez Cabacho in fifth. Quite often you see some athletes really take the steps particularly well, 35 of them today. And sometimes you can really see the difference that the change in muscle groups make. As you see there, Anna Alonso not standing up well to Laura de Planche as she comes past her. Uh, Katia Mascarona also managed to catch up there as they head into this last little skinning part. Katia Mascarona having a slow slow transition there as Anna Alonso and Laura de Planche take the top two spots coming past that second split time. But Anna Alonso, a very quick transition there for her. Never mind how fast or otherwise she was on the stairs. On those steps, she had some very fast transitions, and that is so much of what is important and what counts in this particular discipline in ski mountaineering is just that ability to have that technique down absolutely packed. As we see an absolute battle there with Katia Mascarona just overtaking Laura de Planche at the very last corner as Anna Alonso takes the win. Katia Mascarona comes in second to guarantee her place in the semi-finals. Laura de Planche, we will see. I think that was quite quick. One as Laura de Planche goes, ooh, I would say pretty much head to head. With not Ivone Janczyk in terms of their speed. And if I am correct, going into the lucky loser spot will be Ivone Janczyk and Laura de Planche. But let us wait and see. Gosh, fast and furious, welcome if you've just joined us. We've had the heats for the women here in Boitaul. Look what a beautiful day it is. Uh, the slope was quite, it's quite steep and it was certainly quite icy at the start this morning, but it will be easing off. It will be getting stickier as the sun hits the snow. 
We are in Catalonia, in the province of Lleida, and the commune of Alta Ribergorsa. And isn't it just, just beautiful, right in the middle of the Aguistortis and Estany de San Maurici National Park, which is 14 hectares and is just absolutely a very, very beautiful place to be. Lots of wildlife. There we are, in fact, that's where we are. What can you do here apart from skiing? Well, you can see lots of wildlife. There's mountain biking in the summer, hiking. The Roman ruins are just really, really beautiful. The architecture is stunning around here. And the organizing committee in uh, Boitoul does a fantastic job of looking after us. Mireya Miro there. I'm not sure whether you could hear that, uh, but Mireya Miro, a former world champion uh, ski mountaineer, giving her thoughts on the course and the racing so far. Here we are. So just so you're aware, this is being shown on TV3 Catalonia as well. That is why we have their commentators and their uh, technical analysis going on at the same time. So let's see, where are we? We're at the men and they are starting in just over a minute. Robin Galando there of France, who was third in the European bronze medalist at European Championships in Flen earlier this month, having a great, a really great season of Amand Galando. He is joined on the start line by Max Drian du Chapois of Belgium, the two Swiss, Florian Ulrich and Romain Bussard. From Spain, Marc Radua Iverne and from Italy, Giovanni Rossi. There they are, all lined up. Robin Galando, as I was saying, having a really fantastic season. Fifth in the sprint in Valterrance. He was third here in the World Championships uh, last year. And so he's bronze medalist in both World and European Championships. He was the first under 23. in both. Here we are, Maximilien Drion, Florian Ulrich, Giovanni Rossi, Robin Bussard, Robin Galando, and Marc Radua Iverne. 
First heat for the men here in Boitaoul at the ISMF World Cup. And they are off. Maximilien Drian and Robin Galando. And ooh, got a bit of little bit of sort of barging into position there from uh, Mark Radio Yvern and uh, almost into Florian Ulrich though. But it is look at the speed of these athletes. Extraordinary as they power up here. Because this is a fairly heavily uh, heavy hitting heat. We have Max Drian of Belgium going left on our screens now. Fabien Galando of France on right, on the right. That is the two Swiss. On the left, we have Robin Bussard. On the left, Florian Ulrich. Behind them, Marc Radoa Ivern and Giovanni Rossi, who we haven't seen for a little while. But this is full steam ahead for Maximilien Drian of Belgium and Robin Galando of France. The two Swiss competitors, though, absolutely hot on their heels. As Robin Bussard pushes Florian Ulrich out of that tight, sharp bend. I wondered if that might be the case in the men's competitions, where they're quite often closer to each other, and uh, the competition is quite, I wouldn't say it's hotter, but there are a lot of them, and they're uh, uh, closer, often closer to each other in fitness and capability as Robin Galando up the foot part ahead of Max Drian and Robin Bussard. Robin Galando taking a nice lead there. Robin Bussard. I know that's Florian Ulrich, I beg your pardon, tucking in there, in behind Robin Galando. Oh, Max Drion having a bit of a shocker, getting his skins off there and holding up the line as he went side on to the departure zone, if you like. Here is Robin Galando, nice keeping himself just out of all the shenanigans happening behind him. And very nice, clear win there coming in for Robin Galando with, I think, Florian Ulrich and Max Drian battling out for that guaranteed place. And looks like it's Florian Ulrich takes that second spot. Giovanni Rossi congratulating Robin Bussard on a race well run. That is a great result for Florian Ulrich. We haven't seen him up uh, near the top for a little while. A great athlete from Switzerland. And there we are. The first heat for the men is over. And the second one is just lining up on the left there. You see, ah, there we go. Let's start on the, this side. That is Ot Ferrer Martinez of Spain. Next to him is Andreas Meyer of Austria. Aurélien Gay of the Val de Bagne in Switzerland. Having, also having a really great season. Next to him, Tobias Donnet of the, in the, from Dan du Midi, Région Dan du Midi. Baptiste Elmenreich from Chamonix in France. Finn Hirsch of Germany on the left. And just tucked in there, Christine Cavanier, keeping everybody under control. The 
course commentator's job is absolutely non-stop in a sprint race, so a fantastic job being done, as always, by Christine Cavani as we wait for the start of the second heat here in Boitole in Spain. And they're off. Second heat for the men. The Vertmodif ISMF World Cup here in Boitaul. And it's going to be a tight one. Andreas Meyer, a big, yes, Andreas Meyer of Austria. Batis Delmenreich in beside him. And just to his left, our left now, is Ott Ferrer Martinez of Spain. into that first set of diamonds. As Andy Meyer and Ot Ferrer take the lead here in this first heat, a second heat for the men. You could already see right from the start just the absolute sheer zero to hero that it requires in a sprint race. The gritted bared teeth as they head up and they're going to battle around this right hand bend with Baptiste Delmenreich of France in behind them in third place with the distinctive red helmet. Andy Meyer takes first in that first split. Ott Ferrer behind him. Baptiste Delmenreich, Aurélien Gay of Switzerland in the black helmet nearest us right now. And it's Batis Elmenagai, first in to transition. Excellent management of the foot part there as Ot Ferrer takes off after him. And I think we'll soon see, but I think Aurélien Gay. Yes, it is Aurélien Gay of Switzerland. In third, Finn Hirsch, Tobias Donner, and uh, Andy Meyer. I didn't see what happened there, but uh, not where he was <laughs> about 45 seconds ago. As Batis Emmerich takes a spectacular lead down here in front of these very talented Schemo athletes with Ott Ferrer in behind him, but a great, great come back from sort of third and fourth there from Batis Emmerich as he easily comes across the line can't even see there we are the two in behind it's going to be a battle to see who... oh no not Ferrer has come down and Aurélien Gay of Switzerland is battling across the line and is it going to be oh it is Aurélien Gay of Switzerland ahead of Finn Hirsch and oh dear how disappointing there for uh Ott Ferrer of Spain as he slid and fell coming down in that to that very last corner and a big shrug of the shoulders there. How unfortunate. So going through there, Baptiste Emmenreich of France and Aurélien Gay, who you can see on your left there, uh, with Finn Hirsch of Germany. The fifth place, the third place, and we'll keep an eye on who is our fastest, who are our fastest third place athletes. But I can tell you that Finn Hirsch was a good 10 seconds slower in that third place than Maximilien Drian was third place. So that must have been a very first, fast first start. There we have Arno Gesser, also of the Val de Bang in Switzerland. Pablo Giner of France. Luca Tomazzoni of Italy. Jeremy Anselme of France. Patrick Perretin of Switzerland. It's not unsurprising to see so many Swiss in the sprint 
heats and there aha look at that Thibaut and Selmay so that is two brothers Jeremy and uh, Thibaut up against each other Jeremy in his first year as an under 20 of course world number one last year I doubt there will be any brotherly compassion in this race it's every man for himself as they head off but what I was saying was that the Swiss really were the leaders for such a long time in the sprint and they have of course got some very serious competition now but uh, they are not to be trifled with when it comes to the sprint as we head into heat number three and the elder Anselme Thibault takes the lead in his distinctive yellow helmet and yellow skis. As Pablo Giner and Jeremy Anselme, all three French, powering up here into the second set of diamonds. Oh, and that's a set of, that's a diamond come away there. That'll need to be fixed before the next lot come round. But Pablo Giner overtaking Thibault Anselme in behind them, Luca Tomazzoni has gone into third, and it looks like I suggest. Oh, that looks like one of the Swiss. I think that is Patrick Periton. Yeah, just squeezed out. Squeezed into third, fourth there. Ahead of the younger Anselme. Pablo Giner powering up these steps. But Thibaut Selmé, who has very long levers and can take those steps pretty quickly. Some absolutely cracking images today here of the sprint race in Waitaul. As Thibaut Selmé retakes the lead ahead of Pablo Giner with Luca Tomazzoni and Patrick Periton and Arno Gasser piling in behind to this last transition as they head for skiing. And also May Senior looking nice and smooth as he goes down there, but will want to be on his guard because that is a pretty tight group behind him. Pretty tight indeed. Pablo Giner, Luca Tomazzoni, Patrick Periton. Currently France, France, Italy, Switzerland. And Luca Tomazzone will be wanting to hunt down Pablo Giner in this last bit, but it is going to be a mad skate for the finish. Look at all four athletes. Also looking calm behind him, uh, but it looks like it's going to be Pablo Giner ahead of Arnaud Gasser. Oh, fantastic comeback there from Arnaud Gasser of Verbier in Switzerland as he takes third place behind Thibault Selmé and Pablo Giner of France. Uh, and we'll see if he can take his place as a lucky loser. We shall soon see. It's certainly the second fastest thus far after Max Drillon in the first heat. Of course, these are all provisional results. Uh, we will have to wait and see when they finally... Oh, look at that. That's why that came down. And he still managed to win. And there we are. Thibault Selmé takes the win despite that despite that. Okay, so we have some pretty big hitters in this uh, heat. Basile Ducouré there. Next to him, Florian Sautel of France, both of France. Matteo Favre of Switzerland, a force to be reckoned with in the sprint. Definitely in the under 23 category. Thomas Bussard, the other Bussard twin. The second Bussard twin. Oriel Cardona Cole, two time European champion and world champion. 
He has won here three years in a row, the European Championships two years ago, World Championships last year. And so we'll be looking to make it a triple and one of our favourites on the scene since it feels like forever, Robert Antonioli of Italy. And away they go. And Thomas Bussard takes a very fast lead there with Oriol Cardona Call tucked in behind him. But it's Florian Sotel and Oriol Cardona Call. I beg your pardon, it is not. It is Matteo Favre of Switzerland uh, in behind Thomas Bussard. Thomas Bussard followed by Matteo Favre. Florian Sotel and Basile Ducouré, followed by Oriol Cardona Call. Do not be fooled by the fact that Oriol Cardona Call was sitting in about fourth there. It's a really steep course, and it's not actually that obvious when you look at it, from example, for example, from this angle, but it is a really steep course, and this is an all-out effort. Don't forget they've done it already in qualification, and those who go through will do it once, possibly even twice more. Thomas Bussard takes the split time. The first split time ahead of Matteo Favre, Florian Sotel, Oriel Cardona Call goes into fourth, Basile Ducouré, and coming in behind Robert Antonioli. As Thomas Bussard absolutely char charges up here. Did not have a good sprint in Valterrance. He was 23rd. Oriel Cardona Call having a slip there as he comes in and not having a particularly successful transition at all. It's not like him. Kamabusa, of course, under 20 champion here in the sprint in in 2022. And he, but he is also having a shocker in transition. As it looks like Matteo Favre and Florian Sotel, Switzerland and France, despite that little boot in the transition, is now Matteo Favre ahead as they come down towards the finish line. What a shame for Thomas Bussard, because that was a great lead he put there, and it is Matteo Favre. Ah, who's it going to be ahead of Oriol Cardona Call? Takes second place, Florian Sotel in third. A great win there for Matteo Favre of Switzerland. Ahead of Oriol Cardona Call and Florian Sotel. Takes third place, and I think takes the fastest third place of the day in 2:47.64. But it's a win for Florian Sotel. I uh, beg your pardon for Matteo Favre, who, along with Oriol Cardona Call, will go into the semi-finals. Here we are. It's the final of the, the final heat, and there we have. Ivan Arnold of Switzerland, former sprint world champion, twice, 27, 20, 21, 20, 2017 and 2021. That was Alessandro Rossi. This is Arno Lieta. <laughs> Nicolò Canclini, who was, had a birthday yesterday. Happy birthday to him. And Inigo Martinez Dalbornos Marquez of Spain. And there we have Noé Roger of France. Some absolutely cracking ski mountaineers in this, some sprinters.
specifically in this uh, Arnold Vieta and Ivan Arnold against Nicole Canclini and Nico Martinez. I mean, really some of the best, absolute best of the best here. Arnolieta is the silver medalist in the European Championships a few weeks ago. And off we go. Off we go. This is the final of the men's heats for the sprint race here in Boitaun. The next kickoff will be at 19 minutes past 11 with the women's semi-finals. But here we see Inigo Martinez heading up ahead of Arno Lieta. Switzerland, Noé Rogier of France. And that is Niccolo Canclini with the white and multicolored helmet there. But it's Arno Lieta ahead of Inigo Martinez. Inigo Martinez, Nicolo Canclini, Noé Rogier, Ivan Arnold, and Alessandro Rossi. Very close in the top there. But Arno Lieta has exceptionally long legs and is very strong on these steps. Not these particular steps, but steps in general. Oh, and a little slip there from Niccolo Canclini. Hasn't lost him too much in terms of what's behind him. But you cannot afford to make any mistakes as this is such a tight competition against some of the best, best athletes. And a slip there, still icy at the top there as Inigo Martinez closes down Niccolo Canclini as they come into this last transition. That was a very smart move there. By Inigo Martinez. They get the poles all over this place. And away they go. Of course, the last, the first thing you must do is put down your poles, and the last thing you do is pick them up as Niccolo Canclini overtakes, just coming out of transition there, comes out ahead of Inigo Martinez, but he will have to have his width about him as he is the law student, also member of the Italian Carabinieri will want to guarantee his place in that semi-final. Inigo Martinez, I beg your pardon. <laughs> Arno Lieta, quick look behind him. Arno Lieta, Niccolo Canclini and Inigo Martinez. That is the top three, and it's a fast top three. Noé Rogier coming in there. And if I am not much mistaken, Inigo Martinez has had the fastest third place time. So I suspect it will be Inigo Martinez and Florian Hotel that make it into the semi-finals as the lucky losers. But a great, great set of heats here for the men. So fast and furious as they Look at that, so, so close. The tactics at play to try and keep each other out of that, out of the best line. Saw it as Inigo Martinez uh, kept, uh, kept Niccolo Canclini out of that top section, but in fact, Canclini takes second place. So that is all the heats done. If you're just joining us for the first time this season, you might be wondering why I'm talking about heats. Well, they are no longer called quarterfinals. They're called heats, and that is what we refer to them as from now on. For those of you in the know, you will know, of course, that the sprint is going to the Olympics in 2026. It's 
Bicycle Mountaineering Sprint Discipline alongside the Mixed Relay, which we will be seeing tomorrow here in Boitao at 11 o'clock. But the sprint is going, and so there have been some changes, one of which is a change in vocabulary. Those are now heats, not quarterfinals. And the remaining race names stay the same, as in it becomes the semi-finals and the final, etc. But the qualification into the final has also changed. So that is what we will be seeing next. The semi-finals, normally what we will have been used to seeing from last year and before, is that top three in each semi-final are guaranteed a place in the final. Not so anymore. Now it is the top two plus two lucky losers. So it's the two fastest third or fourth, so it could be from the same semi-final if it's a particularly fast semi-final, and it could be uh, second, uh, third and fourth from that one, but it's different now. Just to clarify, from the semi-finals, which we will see starting at 19 minutes past 11 with the women, it is the first two from each semi-final that is guaranteed a place in the final, plus two, the two fastest across the two semi-finals. Uh, to fastest third or fourth places. Anyway, so what else has changed? Well, of course, this season we are seeing that the women no longer have uh, their numbers in the hundreds. They are also number one, number two, number three, which is excellent to see because, of course, these are also elite athletes and uh, good to see that they have exactly the same numbering as the men. The red number one, obviously the coveted number one bib is red. And then in the for the women, they have the rest of the women wear green numbers and the men wear blue. What else can I tell you is new? Well, for the under 23 athletes, uh, as of last season, they, of course, have had their own overall ranking. But from this year, their points that they garner in the senior category will be the points that they have within their own category. Uh, so we will, they are still battling for their own category positions over the season, but taking the points that they earn in the senior category as they race alongside everybody else. And one last change in the sprint, if you're keen for some stats and info on the rules and updates. I love this sort of stuff, so bear with me. We'll get back to some interesting chat about athletes. Uh, but right now, the distance from the start to the first transition is now allowed to be up to 50 meters of vertical. And the foot part has been shortened to a minimum, a maximum of 15 meters of vertical. Uh, just in case you've just joined us, let's have a little look at the stats for today. 70 meters of vertical in total today, starting at a height of 2,047 metres, rising up to 2,115 metres and finishing at 2,050 because, of course, they skate up towards the finish line uh, for safety's sake. 35 steps, 16 gates and a full distance of 650 metres. That's the length of the course. 54 senior men, I, there were 36 senior women uh, on the start, uh, uh, registered to start, but in fact, only 33 started this morning, which unfortunately meant that only three did not make it through to the heats from qualifying because only 30 athletes can make it in both men and female, in each of the female and male categories. Moment, oh, no there we are. So there's a quick update on what's what. And you can't hear this uh, TV3 Catalonia commentator. So uh, you're just going to keep listening to my dulcet tones. 16 countries registered today. Uh, Andorra, Australia, Austria, Belgium, Brazil, Canada, Chile, France, Germany, Italy, Japan, Poland, Slovakia, Spain, Switzerland and the United States. D'avoir ici à nouveau un cours international de, de skimo. Ouais, bonjour à tout le monde. Oui, on est très content. Même vous savez bien que ça fait quelques années déjà qu'on y travaille, on, on fait la course, on fait les, des championnats du de monde, des championnats d'Europe. Maintenant, cette année, on fait la Coupe du monde. Et euh, il faut dire que nous, on va, euh, on va le faire en continu, on va suivre, on va parce qu'il faut faire la santé, surtout, et même, euh, il nous donne pour euh, la, le monde de la vallée, euh, il nous donne des, un bon travail, euh, les hôtels ils sont pleins, 
MM en Catalunya on ha de championship i on he tret comptant per voler fer un MM on va en fer plus. Molt bé, ens explicaves en Francesc que molt satisfets de tenir aquesta cursa. A banda del que suposa per la competició també, molt ambient aquí, com deies, hotels plens, molt de turisme, tot... Suposo que satisfets per les dues vessants, no? Sí, exactament. La veritat és que estem molt contents. Des que a Ferrocarrils vàrem entrar, ens ho vàrem marcar com una fita de poder fer campionats d'Europa, campionats del món, copes del món, com fem ara, no? Això què ens aporta? El primer, l'esport català és punter, tenim campions mundials, per tant, el món de la neu tenir campions mundials, ostres, ens enorgulleix, no?, els que ens hi dediquem, i després, sobretot, pel nostre territori, no?, per ferrocarrils i el Departament de Territori, donar riquesa, fer que els hotels puguin treballar, que la gent tingui vida, per tant, mirar-hi d'apostar tant com puguem i l'esport, no?, sobretot, perquè també ens ajuda molt a la Secretaria General de l'Esport. Què significa per Boitaull, què significa per Catalunya, Catalunya, pel Pirineu català, doncs poder col·locar aquesta marca en el calendari internacional. Bueno, la veritat és que ens dona molta, molta notorietat. Tingueu en compte que ve molta gent a entrenar, que avui Taüll és un estadi ideal perquè la gent que fa esquí de muntanya pugui anar a l'entorn aquest tan magnífic que tenim a Catalunya per poder fer l'esquí de muntanya. I això, òbviament, ens fica al mercat, no? Allò que hem dit... Ai, al mercat, al món, no? Allò que hem dit sempre, el que el Pirineu l'hem de... Hello, and good morning. If you're just joining us, you're looking just now at some replays of the men's heat here in Boitou. Estem molt contents. Ja ho deies bé, és també del mercat internacional. Exacte, no? Perquè a més que ens passa que nosaltres, jo crec que el Pirineu l'hem de vendre, ha de venir més gent de l'exterior, de que ens vinguin a conèixer. Tothom coneix molt bé els alts, doncs nosaltres tenim un paratge magnífic amb el Pirineu. I per tant, mercat. Un paratge magnífic que ensenyarem aquest cap de setmana per tots els espectadors de la televisió de Catalunya. Gràcies. Moltes gràcies a tothom i a gaudir-ho. Sí, sí, que gaudirem. I especialment ara que estan a punt de començar ja les semifinals. A big pardon. A 5 to 11 tomorrow we will be live with the mixed relay. Just let me tell you, so 19 minutes past 11 for the first of the women's semifinals, 27 minutes past for the second of the semifinals for the women. The, at 11.38, first semi-final for the men. Of the men's semi-finals. Final for the women at 11.57 and 12, 10 minutes past midday, the men's finals. Stick with us after that for the flower ceremony and then we will be gone and back again tomorrow at 10.55 for the mixed relay, which is going to also be very gorgeous and really exciting. But that is where we are, Boy Taul in the Val Boy in the province of Lleida and the commune of Alta Ribagorsa in Catalonia, in Spain. just over 10 minutes until the first of the women's semi-finals.
Just a little bit of an explainer here of what happens in the sprint if you are new to it. There we are, five heats, 30 athletes from the qualifications. Each heat has six athletes and they head up through diamonds, two sets of diamonds, and they also have a foot part and then they ski down to the finish after another bit, then they go through to the semi-final, the two fastest from each one, plus a lucky loser, the two lucky losers. And then, as I said, it is the two fastest from each of the semi-finals, plus two lucky losers, and they get into the final. Marta Garcia Fares here of Spain, warming up, getting ready to go. These are some highlights of the women's heats. We are just about five minutes away from the first of the women's semi-finals and we are watching some of the top moments, the highlights of the heats as they went down earlier on.
José Ramón Inga, este tiempo, este tiempo es fantástico para trabajar. So I can tell you before we get to seeing these amazing women on the start line for the semifinals that the two fastest lucky losers to make it into the semifinals were Ivona Janosik and Laura de Planche. So that is uh, that is how they got their way into the. Here we are, in fact. Here we go. Ivona Janosik from the first heat, Laura de Planche from the final. Just heading into the semi finals, and we can see that those semi finals are the first one Celia Pierre Pessi, Marta Garcia Paris, Tatiana Paller, Emily Harrop, Laura de Planche, and Lisa Moroschini. Second one is Mariana Yagachikova, Julia Murada, Anna Alonso Rodriguez, Marianne Faton, Katia Mascarona, and Ivona Janosik. We are about two and a half minutes away from that start. And there they are, Emily Harrop. European individual and vertical champion. No, absolute nonsense, I beg your pardon. Winner from last weekend in Andorra is what I mean to say. Lisa Moreschini of Italy. Marta Garcia Fares of Spain having a fantastic second season back after her maternity leave. Celia Pere Pese of France. Tatiana Paller of Germany. And Laura de Planche. This semi finals lucky loser. Congratulations to her for being the. In fact, she was the fastest of the third place. Oh, it must be getting warm. Or is that just to get the adrenaline pumping? Junior ski coaches sometimes do that to their athletes on the start line, just to give them a little boost. But the zips are open and very few of them are wearing buffs, neck warmers, snoods, whatever you want to call them. So it must be a good, a good temperature now. Silence now from Christine Cavigny. The music will go off. Semi-finals for the women here in Boitol at the Bert Modif ISMF World Cup 2024. It's the second sprint of the World Cup season. Of course, we've had a European Championships in between, but it is Tatiana Paller, Marta Garcia Fares, and Emily Harrop. In that order, as you see them across your ski screen, Germany, Spain, and France, as they thunder up here, Emily Harrop will be hoping against all hope to have a really, really great race here today. As I say, she did not finish in the uh, sprint in Vatterhals due to some skin malfunctions. And in European Championships, she was absent altogether. And she takes a convincing lead there. Um, well, maybe not convincing, but certainly a certain lead as they come up through the first set of diamonds heading towards the next set. That is Marta Garcia Fares on the left, Tatiana Paller of Germany on the right, as they take their separate ways, they go their separate ways around these diamonds. And 
and it's just Marta Garcia Fares, just a tiny bit ahead of Tatiana Paller, taking a little bit of a different route there. She went a bit wide to get round, and Emily Harrop goes straight to the front of the transition zone, as is the best way in terms of tactics so that you are not ever trapped behind anybody else. Marta Garcia Fares out of there nice and smoothly, and up those steps they go. Well, it's not steps to start with, it is simply uh, a steep bit of slope and there we go uh, for Tatiana Paller onto the steps but it is Emily Harrop with a good three second lead over Marta Garcia Fares as they came across that first split time Emily Harrop of British parentage as you can possibly tell from her name but representing France born and brought up in France completely bilingual And there she goes, Marta Garcia Fares hot on her heels, Tatiana Paller, followed then by Celia Peria Pesce. Emily Harrop out nice and smoothly, Marta Garcia Fares behind her. Looks like that may have been Celia Peria Pesce taking off in behind them, but uh, tricky to say as the camera just shot away there. It was indeed Celia Peria Pesce going into third place. What a great comeback from her. She was quite near the back of the, the queue, if you like. And she will be aiming for to either overtake Marta Garcia in this last skate, or to, and certainly she will be trying, but it is Marta Garcia who takes second place, and Celia Peria Pesce goes into third and we will be having a look at her time. So Emily Harrop and Marta Garcia Fares go into the final for the women here in Boitaul in the Pyrenees in Spain. That was a very much faster race than the heats. Look how smooth these transitions are. It's just, it's a thing of beauty to watch how quickly and how efficiently they get all their various elements done, completed. And there they are heading off down to the finish as in the first of the women's semi-finals, Emily Harrop and Marta Garcia take the top two spots and head into the final with Celia Peria Pesce. We'll be holding her breath and hoping for one of at least one of the fastest spots in the lucky loser category. There is Ana Alonso Rodriguez coming out to start her semi final. She gets to choose and has chosen the middle spot. Mariana Kichikova just behind her. They were second and third, respectively, in the European Championships. Mariana Yegochikova losing her title to Marianne Faton, who we can see just coming in there on the right in the red uniform, the white helmet, and the yellow skis. In this particular semi final, we have Marianne Yegochikova, current world champion, former European champion, Julia Murada. But there is Ivona Janosik of Poland. Julia Murada of Italy, 
Thank you, pardon. We just missed Marianne, Marianne Faton. I missed Marianne Faton. Ana Alonso Rodriguez of Spain. Mariana Igichikova in the red, number one. And Katia Mascherona of Italy. Marianne Faton there, the current European champion, former world champion. And Mariana Yegichikova, former world, European champion, current world champion. So this is a big punchy semi-final here. Some highly, highly experienced and very, very fit and on form athletes. Katia Mascarona, the only under 23 in this particular semi-final. This is the second of the women's semi-finals here in Boitou. It's the sprint race and it is Mariana Igachikova ahead of Marianne Faton with Anna Alonso Rodriguez. Uh, Ivona Janusik on her right hand of our right side of our screen with the red and black uniform. But it, as we can see, is Mariana Igachikova ahead of Marianne Faton and Ivona Janusik. And Alonso Rodriguez in behind her and the two Italians, Katia Mascarona and Julia Murada, bringing up the rear for the moment. Mariana Jagercikova showing why she has been both European and world champion at the same time. Followed by the current European champion. And Ana Alonso of Spain. Second silver medalist, Anna Alonso of Spain, in the U European Championships. In fact, those three were one, two, and three. Faton Alonso Yegochikova in the European Championships. So it is a punchy old semi final here as Ivona Janosic comes up on the right to see if she can just pit in behind, get in front of Marianne, Marianne Faton as Anna Alonso has gone into second behind Mariana Yegochikova. But it is Marianne Faton who comes across that split time third with Ivone Janosic in fourth, Julia Murada, and then Katia Mascherona for both for Italy. And Mariana Yegochikova with a good old lead there over now Marianne Faton who has retaken second place. Anna Alonso. It's not her strongest part, the feet, uh, the foot part, I would say. Certainly not today. But you can see them all going to the inside on the right there because it is a good place to be in order to get onto the inside corner. But as Marianne Faton takes off after Marianne Yegichikova, Anna Alonso still in third. Down in fourth behind. That uh, was Julia Murada with Katia Mascarona in fifth. A uh, sixth, I beg your pardon. And they're off Mariana Yegochikova. Not only former European and current world champion in the sprint, but also a doctor of geology, as you do as if life wasn't busy enough. And she uh, comes down here looking very comfortable, ahead of Mayan Faton and Anna Alok.
So Mariana Yegichikova and Marianne Faton will go into the final. Anna Alonso looks to me like she has either the fastest or the second fastest third place time. I think the second place the third time there. If I am correct, the two women going through in the lucky loser place will be Celia Pia Pese and Ana Alonso Rodriguez. But guaranteed places for Emily Harrop and Marta Garcia Fares, Mariana Igichikova, and Marianne Faton of Switzerland. If you are unfamiliar with putting on a pair of these skis to get them into those little holes at the front of your boots, very technical term there. Uh, with the amount of speed and precision that these athletes do, it, it is truly exceptional. It is not an easy thing to do, and they get it right nearly every time. They practice and practice and practice and practice. And uh, I'm really enjoying, but I don't know about you, but I'm really enjoying seeing uh, the up close and personal as well as some really good overall footage. Today, provided to us by TVC Catalonia. Sí, anem a comentar tot això amb el David Ros, ell és el director d'aquí de l'estació de Boitaull. Uh, we're going to ask first uh, the question in Catalan and then I'm going to translate this. Uh, David, què significa per una estació com Boitaull de poder tornar a tenir una cursa internacional com aquesta un altre any més? Doncs per nosaltres és la confirmació de que la feina la fem ben feta. Ja fa molts anys que vam començar amb campionats d'Espanya, ens vam atrevir amb uns campionats d'Europa el 22, hem fet els, segons l'ISMF, els millors campionats campionats del món que es van fer l'any 23 i ara hem volgut entrar dintre del que seria el calendari de, i el circuit de Copa de, del Món i això evidentment eh, destaca que la Vall de Boí, que les, les pistes de Boí i Taüll són ideals per l'esquí de muntanya. Avui ho estem veient amb aquestes dues modalitats d'esprint i demà que farem la modalitat de relleus, que les dues seran olímpiques a Cortina, per lo qual molt satisfets de que es vagi confirmant de la confiança de l'ICMF i molt content perquè la feina que es fa des d'avui és molt bona. So the director of the semifinals at Boita Ulls said that they are very satisfied, very happy that the competition is, they're hosting the competition again. It's the third year after the Europeans two years ago and the World Championships last year. Um, he said also that the ISMF um, said that they were very satisfied too with the competition hosting last year, that uh, this weekend we are going to see the sprint race, the mixed relay. Um, these are the two races that are going to be Olympic in two years, in 2026. So um, we're going to ask him now. Um, there's a fever uh, in Skimo. Hi ha una febre a l'Esquimo. Eh? Abans la gent venia aquí a fer esquí de muntanya i ara a fer esquí alpí, perdó, i ara cada vegada hi ha més gent que aposta doncs, per conèixer aquesta modalitat. La veritat és que sí, la veritat és que és una modalitat que cada vegades més practica més. També pensem que la gent que fa running de muntanya, la gent que fa ciclisme, s'ha interessat per a, 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 també anar a la muntanya a l'hivern i a l'esquí de muntanya és ideal, evidentment, no? I es veu com, com totes les marques evolucionen material cada vegada més, més adequat per l'esquí de muntanya, no només per l'alpí i marques com fins i tot veuríem un decalón, no? Si un decalón està fent esquí de muntanya vol dir que estem popularitzant aquest esport. Per lo qual, molt contents perquè això dona un accés a la muntanya. També s'ha de dir 
que les estacions d'esquí tenim recorreguts d'esquí de muntanya marcats perquè hi hagi una combinació amb l'esquiador del Pi o amb el de Snowboard i també perquè donen una seguretat que tot allò que sigui l'accés a la muntanya de no balisada, muntanya no balisada, també té els seus perills. Per la qual cosa, recomanar a la gent que vol començar que les estacions d'esquí disposem de material de lloguer d'esquí de muntanya, per la qual cosa poden venir a escoles d'esquí homologades que ensenyen aquesta pràctica i animar tothom perquè és la manera més senzilla de poder gaudir de la muntanya a part de l'esquí del Picla, que sí. Cada vegada més fàcil ho tenen per provar aquest esport. Els que ja l'han provat, els que són gairebé professionals i esperem que futurs medallistes olímpics són els esportistes catalans, cada vegada hi ha més nivell i tot això té un punt de mira, que és el 2026 a Milà Cortina d'Ampezzo. Sí, justament per això, com nosaltres creiem amb els esportistes catalans, les medalles que van fer l'any passat esportistes com l'Oriol Cardona, que a veure què és el que farà avui, no?, i que ve de guanyar els europeus, que ve també de guanyar una prova de Copa del Món, doncs marquen que evidentment nosaltres hem escollit aquestes dues proves, les primeres relleus, perquè es puguin preparar a casa per aquestes Olimpiades, no? Està pujant una gent molt bona, a l'Ot Ferrer, la Marta García, n'hi ha gent molt potent amb l'esquí de muntanya català, i des de casa, evidentment, els hem d'ajudar que segueixin. Moltes gràcies, David, que vagi molt bé tot el cap de setmana. Moltes gràcies a vosaltres, que com sempre ens ajudeu a fer ressò tot el que fem. És el David Ros que ens ho explicava, aquestes paraules del David Ros, el director de l'estació de Boi Taüll, que volen que continuï aquesta col·laboració amb ISMF i continuar acollint aquestes proves internacionals. Next to him, also from the Val de Bain, from Verbier, as you can see from his helmet, Arnaud Gasser, The people from the Val de Bagne will be very excited. Also from Switzerland today, Florian Ulrich. From Chamonix, Baptiste Elmenreich, who's an engineer in real life. In real life. <laughs> in his non-schemo life. And Rock Bangalando, warming up there, just getting into the groove. bronze medalist in the European Championship in Flen. hear his breathing exercises just before the gun went and he takes the lead ahead of Baptiste Elmenreich and I think that looks like Aurelien Gay of Switzerland powering up there into second just ski to ski and in fact it is not it is Inigo Martinez my apologies uh, Inigo Martinez of Spain up there with the two Frenchmen oh and Baptiste Elmenreich cheeky little barging there uh, to push Inigo Martinez, but he has lost out in that particular tactical error uh, because he has ended up third in behind Inigo Martinez. It is Florian Ulrich of Switzerland behind them. Actually, it could be uh, Aurelien Gay, my apologies. But it is Robin Galando, bronze medalist at the European Championships. Inigo Martinez. Baptiste Elmenreich. It is Florian Ulrich uh, in behind them. Now, Robin Galando, Inigo Martinez, who, if you were watching the World Championships last year, gave the most spectacular performance in the mixed relay race. Um, really one of the, I think, highlights of my season last year, watching him compete in the mixed relay. Uh, in fact, I beg your pardon, I think it was in Tromso where he had that spectacular uh, Spectacular mixed relay. 
Anyway, a very talented athlete as we see Robin Galando ahead of Inigo Martinez. Arno Gasser has made it into third ahead of Florian Ulrich, uh, Baptiste Semenreich, and then Aurelien Gay as they head off down the hill. Robin Galando taking a nice lead there. Arno Gasser has gone into second place ahead of Inigo Martinez. And it's going to be if Arno Gasser can hold off Inigo Martinez at the line and just skate, skate, skate. It is going to be France, Switzerland, number two, uh, one and two, and Inigo Martinez in number three. Robin Galando takes the win and along with Arno Gasser makes it into the final for the Men's World Cup here in Boitaul. A very mixed bag of a race there. Lots of people in different positions. Arno Gasser coming from quite far back in the field there to take second place. Oh, look at this great view where we can see the next semi-finalists lining up to come in along with the volunteers here in Boitaul. As we all know, none of these races would be possible without the volunteers. So as always, a very big thank you and a big round of appreciation for them. Oh, Nicola Canclini having a little yawn there before he heads in to this semi-final alongside some of the best athletes in the ski mountaineering world, certainly in the sprint world. The coveted red number there of number one of Oriol Cardona Call, double European and world champion, Florian Sotel on his, on our right there, just jiggling in the blue helmet. As Enigo Martinez goes out of kit check, material check, Florian Sotel of France. There's a white water rafting coach in his other life. Guide, I should say, not coach, guide. Oriel Cardona Call, a man who also loves to be beside the seaside. He loves a bit of surfing and swimming. Thibault Anselme, world number one, last year's overall winner of the World Cup. Arno Lieta of Switzerland, former world under 23 world champion Matteo Favre, excellent, excellent young athlete in the under 23 category from Switzerland, and Nicolo Canclini, 27 years old as of yesterday. Should be finished his law studies this year. Nolieta, of course, last year's overall sprint winner as well. And Matteo Favre, fourth in the under 23s at the European Championships earlier this month. Ninth in Valterrance, but before that, all last season, a really, really high uh, incidence of being in the final third in Tromso. And in fact, it was the sprint, it was the bronze medalist in the under 20s here, uh, not here, but in Andorra in 2021 in the World Championships.
There we are, Christine Cavanier telling us that we're one minute from the start. This is a punchy semi-final. I mean, as you would expect, we're in the semi-finals. This is a high caliber of athletes here. Five Swiss across the two semi-finals. Four French, two Spaniards, and one Italian. And in this particular one, Spain, France, times two, Italy, one and two Swiss athletes we can see here. And they're off. This is the last of the semi-finals. This particular sunny morning on this very icy and steep track here in Boito in the Pyrenees in Spain as Oriol Cardona Paul, the current European and world champion, takes the lead. He looks like from this angle has Matteo Fabre behind him. And I suspect that is Arno Lieta coming up fast to sit right in behind them. We shall soon see because we'll have our beautiful drone footage any minute. Here we go. And it is Oriol Cardona call, Matteo Favre. Oh no, who has lost a ski. What an absolute shocker for the young Swiss man from Sion in Valais as Arno Lieta goes into second place with Florian Soutel. But on his heels, Niccolo Canclini in the white helmet there, going right in behind Florian Soutel as they head up in the second set of diamonds. What a shame for Matteo Favre to lose a ski. And there is uh, Thibaut Anselme in behind them. For a couple of years now, the big battle has been Oriol Cardona Col and Arno Lieta. So uh, it is always interesting to see them in the same race in the same semi same semi-final. But right at this minute, it is just Royal Sotel, a couple of steps ahead of Arnold Lieta, in behind Oriol Cardona Call. But here he comes, as suspected. Yvon Selme making us think that he was behind, but in fact, no. There he is, getting clipped in. And it's Arnold Lieta away first. Oriol Cardona not having great success in his. Uh, in the transitions today, a little bit fumbly. It's Florian Sotel ahead of Arno Lieta and Thibaut Anselme with Oriol Cardona call in fourth. That is Niccolo Canclini in behind them and Arno Lieta, Florian Sotel. And it's going to be an absolute battle here as Thibaut Anselme really manages to cut off Oriol Cardona call as they come down here. And it's going to be super tight. Arno Lieta better not breathe for one second and just keep his wits about him. In fact, all of them must do this as it is Lieta, Sotel, Anselme and Cardona Call as they come across the line. This is going to be some skating battle to the finish as, Oriel, as Arno Lieta takes it ahead of yes, Florian Sotel with Thibaut Anselme in third and Oriel Cardona Call after a bit of a mishap in transition at the top there, taking fourth Nicolo Canclini in fifth. Thibaut Selme, however, has the third, he has the fastest third place so far. So he will uh, alongside, I believe, Inigo Martinez, get into the final. Wow. It is, as always, a wildly exciting uh, sport and discipline. Look at Matteo Favre, absolute shocker. Couldn't even see where his ski was for a second there. What a shame for the young Cédunois, as they say, in uh, that is a person from Sion in the, the capital of Valais in Switzerland, in case you're wondering. Uh, and away they go. 
si no me equivoco, el entonces de cuarta que es esta manera, entraría aquí de la final. Oriol Perdona Cole with a good lead there, right up until he had a bit of a blip in transition. And just you can see how tight it was in this race. Because there are more men than women competing, it, it, sometimes these races, because a lot of the men have a lot more experience, uh, the some of the the sort of the battles within the sprint race can be a lot more populated, if you like. Uh, the battles in the women's races are equally as exciting, but usually quite often, I would say, uh, between fewer athletes. But in the men, uh, there are a lot of them that are closer to each other in uh, capability, I we say. And you can see there, just a bit of a fumble, can't quite get those skis off. And it's every second counts. For want of a better cliche, <laughs> it really is in this game. And Arno Lieta just showing what a world-class athlete he is there. Quick bite to eat there for the uh, race team or the organizing team or the as they keep everybody out on the mountain on the hill safe telling coaches I can tell you you can see there that he has crampons on that blue section there that is for coaches and press and uh, so on but there that it is so steep and icy that crampons are absolutely obligatory. And that is just in order to keep everybody safe. But even then, you could see he was zigzagging across that bit of hill to stay up and safe. We are about four minutes away, just about four and a half minutes away from the start of the women's, uh, the women's final. These are some beautiful images from Boitaul, and I can tell you that it really is a very, very beautiful part of the world here in the Pyrenees. It's right in the middle of the Agustortis and Esteni de San Maurici National Park, which is just absolutely stunning. 14 hectares of um, beautiful mountains and Roman ruins, and as you can see here, a lot of phenomenal art. Two and a half minutes away from the start of the women's final here in Boitaul, and there they are coming up to the line, the best of the best of today's competition. This is quite frankly, I would say, one of the highest caliber finals 
in the women's competition I have seen in a long, long time. Let me tell you who is on the start line here. There we go. So Celia Periapese and Ana Alonso Rodriguez make it through on the lucky losers. And we have Mariana Yuguchikova of Slovakia, Celia Periapese of France, Marta Garcia Fares and Ana Alonso Rodriguez of Spain, Marianne Faton of Switzerland, and Emily Harrop of France out here doing battle for the sprint title here today. Ana Alonso Rodriguez and Marta Garcia Fares in front of the home crowd. So that's always worth a few extra motivation points when you're racing. Ryan Faton, most recently crowned European sprint champion, former world champion, back in her second season after year out, Mariana Jigotikova of Slovakia. One of the oldest athletes out there, still absolutely killing it, as they say. Emily Harrop, last year's number one overall, winner of the individual and the vertical. I beg your pardon, she did not win the vertical last week. She was second behind Alba de Silvestro in Andorra, and that's Celia Peria Pese, who is really going from strength to strength. Celia Peria Pese, second overall in the sprint category discipline last year. Mariana Yigichikova, third. Emily Harrop, the winner. Mayan Faton, fourth. So some absolutely top class athletes here lining up. And away they go. And this is it, this is the women's final. And they're off, and that is Emily Harrop in the middle there. Dominating from the start. I beg your pardon, it, it most certainly is not. <laughs> It's Mariana Yegachikova with Emily Harp behind her, Mayan Faton, and then Ana Alonso Rodriguez, Marta Garcia Fares, and Celia Pera Pese. But Mariana Yegachikova out of the traps like a greyhound. Away she goes, absolutely caning it up here with Emily Harrop doing her best, but really that is some gap already. However, as we know, it is a short race, but a long race if you do not keep up the tempo and get all the technical elements right. As Mariana Yegochikova comes thundering out of the first set of diamonds with Emily Harrop hot on her heels. It's now, it looks like a clear gap between the two of them and the rest of the field. Difficult to see from this angle how close the others are, but here we go. Both Mariana Yegochikova and Emily Harrop taking the right-hand side of the diamonds. That gets you closer to the inside line as you come up to this right-hand turn into the foot part of the race. Emily Harrop catching her up still, it's two seconds between them, that is absolutely nothing. And here it come, looked like the legs of Marta Garcia Fares exactly, and, and also the two Spaniards, Marianne Faton and Celia Pesley behind them. Mariana Jaeger Tukova. Third in the European Championships last uh, a couple of weeks ago. Third in the sprint in Val Terrance. We'll be doing everything to get up the podium and Celia Pere Pese overtakes Ana Alonso to come in for behind Marta Garcia Fares. Here we go. Mariana Yegutikova still holding that two second lead over Emily Harrop as they head into this skiing part. Mariana Yegutikova takes off first. Emily Harrop, a little fumble with the poles there. Celia Pere Pese in third. Marta Garcia Fares. Ana Alonso Rodriguez and And that was Mariam Faton in behind. 
Emily Harrop doing her best to catch Mariana Yuguchikova, but these two are old adversaries. And so this will be, oh, Marianne, do not, do not relax. She's right on your heels. It's a, a finish we've seen before. Oh, Mariana Yuguchikova takes it with an absolute hair's breadth against me. <laughs> And friends and adversaries as Celia Peria Pesci comes in third, Marta Garcia Paris, Ana Alonso Rodriguez, and Marianne Faton. But that was a really exciting finish there between two friends and, uh, as I say, long term adversaries. But uh, yeah, that is a finish we have seen before. You could see Marianne Yuchikova felt like she was just slightly relaxing there. I don't know if she knew how close Emily Harrop was. Uh, I'm going to be quite honest, if I can see from my, I can tell from my screen, I would say she was not entirely sure that she had so short of a lead, or maybe she just ran out of steam right at the end there. However, she gets it by the tip of a ski, ahead of Emily Harrop and all good natured as you can see there a great race um, such great camaraderie between these athletes it's so great to see and the two Spaniards despite the home crowd not quite doing what they would have hoped coming in fourth and fifth I think Mariana Yuguchikova was, if I dare say it, a tiny bit lucky there at the end, because as I say, I don't think she really uh, quite grasped that, that, <laughs> that, that, that the Emily Harrop train was thundering in so close behind her. But a great race right from the start. Mariana Yeguchikova absolutely dominating this race right till the very last meters. And she is the winner here in Boitaul. And the two Spaniards, Marta, Marta Garcia Fares, Ana Alonso Rodriguez, battling hard, hard, hard for this, but eventually overtaken by Celia Peria Pese. You can see there, she came past them, I think, in the foot part. Marianne Faton not having the best race of her season, but uh, still into the final uh, and number six, nothing to be sniffed at. Almost a photo finish, we would say, we could say. And there we have it, Emily Harrop of France takes it. Oh, it's, it's been changed. There we go, look at that. Emily Harrop has taken the win uh, ahead of Mariana Yuguchikova. Um, it did, in fact, look a little bit like that as she l lurched across the line, but there you go. Emily Harrop takes the win ahead of Mariana Yeguchikova. According to these results, of course, we will wait for the official, official results, which you can always see uh, later on on the uh, website, the ISMF website. It looks just now as if it was, in fact, Emily Harrop. Getting all ready now for the men's final, the last final of the day, which will be taking, uh, happening in just over five minutes. We can see that, well, interestingly, Thibon Selmay and Oriol Cardona call up the fastest uh, lucky loser times from the same semi-final. So they will both be going through. Uh, really great to see both of them in there uh, because... Uh, well, quite frankly, we would expect to see them in a final is, uh, is the long and short of it. Um, so that is for the men's finals. 
Ariel Cardona Cole, Thibault Anselme, Robin Galando, Arno Lieta, Florian Sotel, and Arno Gasser. Two Switzerland, three France, and a Spaniard. Ariel Cardona Cole will be wanting to make this three from three of a win in a, in a sprint here in three years in a row in Boitaul in his home country. Not long to go. Robin Galando, who was third. He's the bronze medalist in the European Championships and the World Championships. Both here. Number six, Arno Lieta of Switzerland. Silver medalist in Flen in the European Championships earlier this month. In the blue helmet there, sort of murky blue helmet, that is Florian Sotel of France. In the yellow helmet, number three, Thibault Selmé. Third here in the World Championships last year. I beg your pardon, second here in the World Championships. Florian Sotel, fifth in the World Championships here in the sprint last year. So again, a very punchy final here. This will be Arno Gasser's best result for a while, actually. Not his best season last year, but uh, into the final now. Here is Oriol Cardona Call, double European and current world champion. Thibon Semé, world number one and winner of the overall World Cup title last year. Florian Sotel from France. Fifth in the World Championships here last year. Arno Lieta of Switzerland. Overall sprint winner last year and winner of nearly all of the sprint competitions last season. Arno Kasser of Verbier in Switzerland. Robin Galando. of France. I can tell you that Arno Gasser had, if I'm correct, I think an ankle injury last season. And there on the right of our screen, we saw actually Thierry Galando, who is Robin Galando's father and also a French coach. One minute until the last of the races here today in Boitaoul. What an absolutely gorgeous day it has been. Icy and steep, but really a fantastic, fantastic days racing, mornings racing, I should say.
away they go there. A really good start there for Robin Galando. Absolutely thundering out of the gate. And he has Earl Cardona Paul closing hard. Arno Lieta, Arno Gasser, Florian uh, Thibault Selmé, and Florian Soutel in that order. Robin Galando will be wanting to take this win. Well, I mean, all of them will, but uh, this is a very ambitious young man. His best uh, place so far was in Schladming last year. He was third, third in the European Championships. He is the current under-23 world champion, um, third in that race as well here last year. But he is making an absolute click. It's so sticky and really making a bit of a boob there. Oh no, he's had an absolute shocker. He's lost a ski. Commentator's curse. And away we go as we see Aurel Cardona call coming into the lead there ahead of Arno Lieta and Thibaut Selmé. Arno Gasser in fourth. What a shame for Robin Galando. And look at Thibaut Anselme go, coming, coming in from fifth, coming up that first bit through the diamonds. And he's absolutely gaining it up here over these steps, like making them look like they were flat as he comes into that next transition with Oriol Cardona Cole and Arno Lieta, the old adversaries of many seasons now, neck and neck in second and third. That's Arno Gasser just coming in there in fourth. But it is Thibaut Anselme absolutely powering through the pack there, taking advantage of Robin Galando's tumble, um, but also just one of those athletes, as we know, that can really, really come through the pack, surprising everybody, although we should stop saying it's a surprise. Um, and there's Arno Lieta going into third, Oriol Cardona, I uh, beg your pardon, second, and Oriol Cardona in third. Thibaut me what an absolute masterclass. Oh, well, a bit of a bump there as Oriol Cardona call. Uh, taking a little bit of a bump on the slope there and Arno Gasser in fourth position. He will be absolutely delighted with that result. And Thibaut Selmé wins here in. I would go so far as to say that that could be one of the first sprint wins for Thibaut Selmé. Arno Lieta in second, Oriol Cardona Call in the third, Arno Gasser in fourth. As Thibaut Selmé takes the win. I think, if I'm not much mistaken, that that is Thibaut Anselme's first ISMF World Cup sprint win. I could be proved wrong, uh, obviously, but I, um, I believe that it is. Uh, so congratulations to him. Uh, a fantastic result. Big congratulations to him from the fifth place finals hotel. And there comes Robin Galando doing a bit, <laughs> a bit of a 180 across the line. A disappointing day out for him. And there are the boys from Schemo Stats. They'd be the ones to tell us. Um, but in fact, I believe this is his first. Uh, he has been this French national sprint champion, but he has not won a sprint race in, uh, in the World Cup Series. Congratulations to him, fantastic. And poor old Robin Galando took uh, a bit of a tumble there, slipped, uh, his skin came loose, that's what it was. Skin came off, then he got caught in the diamonds and it all just went a little bit wrong after such an incredibly strong start. Um, but that is the name of the game, as we know, as we know that that is always a possibility in the sprint. It's happened to the best, Robin. Don't fret next time. So, phenomenal morning of racing here in uh, Boitaul. We have just seen Thibaut Anselme take his first sprint win.
in a World Cup race. Estem vivint una jornada superintensa aquestes finals, ara mateix ho parlarem amb el Jordi Canals, el secretari general de l'ISMF a la Federació Internacional d'Esquí de Muntanya. First of all, we want to ask you about the level that we are seeing every year. The level is higher. Is this because of the fact that it's going to be an Olympic sport in two years, in 2026? Well, our athletes are awesome, for sure. They are really, really amazing. And yes, I can agree that the level is increasing every year. We can see all these uh, rivals, uh, the rival of the women who was with the photo finish, and also when you see the six first athletes in the both finals, uh, the level is really, really high, and it is a very interesting scenario for our sport. Li hem preguntat al Jordi Canals, al secretari general de l'ISMF, si creia que aquest bon nivell que està creixent cada any que veiem és pel fet que en dos anys se celebraran els Jocs Olímpics amb aquesta especialitat, els Jocs Olímpics d'hivern. Ens ha dit que sí que creia que això era així i que s'ha pogut veure, de fet, en la final femenina que s'ha hagut de decidir en photo finish. Ha sigut una final molt, molt lluitada i també, Déu-n'hi-do el que hem patit ara, també a la masculina, l'Oriol, finalment ha fet podi, ens ha fet patir per això, eh, avui? Bé, yes, for sure. Ara podem fer-ho en català. Perdoneu. Sí, aquestes finals són molt, molt emocionants, ens ha fet patir tots els corredors, l'Anna, la Marta, l'Oriol, fins a l'últim moment, i com sempre l'Oriol ens està acostumant que va de menys a més als hits, als semifinals i a les finals, i la veritat és que ha fet unes grans carreres. Tu formes part d'aquesta entitat que és internacional, però com és important per Catalunya, per la Pirineu català, per Boitaüll, en concret, que tingui una prova en el calendari internacional? Home, jo penso que és molt, molt important que aquest acontexament que va començar en Campeones d'Europa continua en Campeones del Món i aquest any una magnífica Copa del Món amb un temps excel·lent i unes condicions de circuit extraordinàries hem de continuar com a mínim més enllà de Milano Cortina 2026. Molt bé, doncs moltes gràcies Jordi, que hi hagi molta sort aquest cap de setmana. No, moltes gràcies a vosaltres, a TV3 i a tots els espectadors que estan veient aquest programa. Gràcies. Gràcies Jordi. El Jordi Canals és una de les personalitats més importants d'aquesta federació internacional, és català, tenim la sort de tenir-lo aquí amb nosaltres i com sempre ens atén i ens explica la seva visió sobre la competició. That was Jordi Canals, General Secretary of the ISMF, being interviewed there by TV3 Catalunya. Jordi doing a really great job, or has done and continues to do a great job of uh, guiding ski mountaineering through the process of getting to and being successful at the Olympics. So a very big thank you and well done to Jordi. Phenomenal, as I've said many times, it's a phenomenal days racing here in uh, Boitaul for the ISMF, the Vert Rodif ISMF World Cup 2024. Uh, we have just seen uh, Thibaut Anselme win ahead of Arno Lieta and Oriol Cardona Call in the sprint, a momentous day for him. Um, pending official confirmation, we will be seeing uh, the women, Emily Harp ahead of Ye uh, Mariana Yegichikova and Celia Pia Pese, heading up for the flower ceremony in a second. And I say pending confirmation because that looked like a bit of a photo finish, and it was originally Yegichikova, then it became Harp, so we'll be at. Uh, I cannot give you. Uh, anything other than what I see on my screen, which at the moment is Emily Harrop ahead of Mariana Yegichikova.
I just wanted to update you and doing a little bit of uh, uh, investigation. In fact, it is Thibaut Anselme's second sprint win in the ISMF World Cup. His first was in 2020 in Adamello, in Ponte di Legno, uh, in December 2020. So that was the 2021 season. Uh, so still, though, a phenomenal because that's four years ago and he has now won again and as I say to win ahead of two of the best sprinters in the sport is uh, really something else. Just waiting for the women to come to the flower ceremony. I heard them being called there, as I'm sure you did. was an absolute point of finish there at the end of the women's race. As Emily Harrop, wow, what a great gift that is. I mean, flower ceremony is a bit of a misnomer these days. They get such great, fun gifts. As we see Emily Harrop take the win there ahead of Mariana Yugotkova of Slovakia. And VIPs jump in for a quick photo. That is the top three women here in Boitaul. Hello. 
We will just be waiting for the men now, or we are waiting for the men. And uh, then we will be finished for the day. It has been an absolute pleasure bringing you this gorgeous morning of racing from Boitaul in Spain. Christine Cavanier just getting everybody organized there. Cardona Call there in third place for Spain. Not to be his third win in three years in Boitoul, but uh, still a podium place for him. His long term adversary, Arno Lieta, goes into second place. How often you see these two men in second and third. Anselme takes his second ever win in a sprint race three and a bit years after his first one in Ponte di Legno and he will be absolutely thrilled. Look at that, as they say in French, that banan, that big, big smile, absolutely thrilled and as I say, to be ahead of those two men on a sprint podium is, uh, a, is, a, is an effort and a half. That must be immensely gratifying. So congratulations to all three of them. Emily, that was quite a race, and in the end, wow, with photo finish and all. Oh yeah, no, photo finish for sure, it's just like amazing um, racing really to watch and uh, to live as well when you're in the race. Uh, I was trying to kind of really believe that it could happen until the end, and it was the first time that I kind of had to throw my foot at the end, so I'm really happy. Um, there was a really high level today. Mariana was really, really strong, congrats to her. I'm so happy to get uh, Celia on the podium as well. It's uh, great, it's really great. And a Celia, who is a second race, que a second race, who has made a good race, and that yes, has been good for the photo finish. It's been very emotional. Last year, you were third one, so also you won a medal here, now the gold. It's a good scenario for you. Yeah, no, it's a really good scenario for me. Uh, we've been coming to Spain now for three years. It has been two years that I've, I've been uh, third place. So I'm really happy uh, to get a uh, top spot today. Uh, it means a lot. <laughs> a few words in your own language? For the French audience. French audience. Ouais, non, super, super sprint aujourd'hui. On est tellement content euh, là de, du, enfin, du dénouement final avec euh, bah, Celia troisième sur le podium aussi. Thibaut qui gagne. Franchement, on pouvait pas demander mieux et je suis vraiment, vraiment contente de ma performance aujourd'hui. Il y avait un niveau très, très relevé. Donc, euh, donc voilà, je prends et ça va donner de la confiance pour la suite. Merci, Emily. Muchas gracias a Emily Jarro. Para Nema Busca, el Tibo Anselme, que está, creo que el tenim aquí darrera. If you want to come, please. Es el seu compatriota, una otra francesa, ha guanyat en aquest cas la final masculina. Um, quite a race. Yeah, yeah, very good race. I'm very happy today. It was very hard, uh, an hard sprint. It was uh, difficult for me in the qualification in quarter final, but my shape increased. Uh, a lap, a lap after lap, and yeah, I'm very happy with this win. It's a, it's a good job, and yeah, the French team uh, was in good shape. A great result for the team. Last year you were second, and now a gold medal. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Yeah, a win is a win, and yeah, it's, it's so good. Few words in French for the French audience. Oui, merci à tous. Je veux aussi remercier toute ma famille, mes proches qui m'aident au quotidien. C'est aussi grâce à eux que, que je gagne aujourd'hui. 
Et euh, bon, la saison est encore longue, il y a des belles choses encore à faire. Et, euh, merci à tous ceux qui me soutiennent. Et euh, voilà, merci aussi à l'équipe de France, on fait du bon travail. Merci et félicitations. Je ne sais pas si tenim ara temps à tenir l'Oriol Cardona. Les meus companys, si me'l poden atensar, i ens ve l'Oriol Cardona, podrem parlar amb ell. Oriol, felicitats per aquesta medalla de bronze. No sé si té un regust de poc, volies l'or, o estàs prou content amb aquesta medalla de bronze? No, no, per res, estic molt content. Sí que vinc de dues victòries aquest any. Però bé, avui no em trobava massa fi, no, sensacions dolentes, els canvis l'he liat bastant a tot, la baixada tampoc ha sigut massa bo i, i molt content d'aquest tercer lloc. Crec que avui, bueno, tenia dubtes d'arribar a la final, si arribaria o no a la final i bueno, un cop ja ha sigut ho he donat tot i, i ha sortit el que ha sortit. He had some doubts whether he was going to reach the final, but he uh, finally could do it. And he uh, he got this um, bronze medal, and he's very happy with it. What are the sensations you have for tomorrow? I'm still tired. I'm still tired. I'm still tired. But the race is a good test. I like it. The circuit is here. I've been able to see it a little bit. And it's a good test. And I'm going to rest all the time. And I hope it will be done tomorrow morning. Bé, gràcies, Oriol, i felicitats per aquesta medalla de bronze. Òbviament optava a aquest or, es repetia el de l'any passat, no ha pogut ser, però ha fet un podi i està molt content amb aquesta medalla. Thank you so, so much for joining us this morning. It has been a glorious day here in the Spanish Pyrenees. We are back tomorrow morning at 10.55 Central European time, back in Boitoul for the mixed relay. Um, we will probably see those two winners from today, Emily Harrop and Thibault Selmé, um, doing their best to take the win for that. It has been a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.